Good afternoon. I am Dr. Fabula. I am an orthopedic surgeon by practice. And my topic for this afternoon is about accidents and injuries in school. So the topic would be uh, discussing on the percentages now of injuries with, for in school, which are around 3% to 9% for children. The fractures per se is around 5% to 10% of all school-related injuries. The incidence of injuries by age distribution with the lowest is around 1 to 5 years old, which is around 20%. A 6 to 9 years old, around 27%. And the highest would be around 13 to 17%, which account 30% of the population of the percentages. With um, 3 to 1 male to female ratio. The primary cause would be around fall, which account for 78%, and followed lag behind by um, traffic accidents with around 11%. The school has account around 27, 20.7% of place of in injuries, followed by streets, and still the highest will be at home, which is also shown in this diagram with the black bar, bar graph is still the home as the main area for accident. The overall frequency of fractures for boys and girls at age 0 to 16 years old is around 42%, with girls around 27%, with a fracture-related injury every year is around 1% to 2%. These are the common, uh, we'll discuss about the common childhood fractures in this occasion, uh, sports injuries, infection, and bacterial child injuries. So there are four topics to be discussed in this succeeding lines, succeeding slides. The common child fractures in this location. So we discuss about what is a fracture. It is an injury caused by a break in the bone. So when you have a fracture, it can be an open fracture or a closed fracture, meaning an open fracture is when the bone breaks and breaks the skin outside the 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 body that becomes an open fracture you have a wound you have a bleeding so that especially in the area of fracture that is an open fracture when you say your fracture is closed when you check your deformity it, it doesn't have any wound it doesn't have any bleeding active bleeding or any exposed wound that is a closed fracture so what are the common fractures Location would be first on the wrist, then followed by the forearm, then elbow, then collarbone, and the thigh. We go with the wrist fractures. This is the common site of forearm fractures. It is very common in adolescents after a fall on an extended wrist, as shown on your x rays on the right side of the screen. So you can see a, a break in the continuity of the bone, that's what you call a fracture. And it can be seen on the front view and the side view of the same area of the wrist. What are the signs and symptoms would be, you can see some swelling over the wrist, a tenderness, a painful motion of the wrist, and gross deformity of the wrist. So what to do when you have this uh, condition or incidents, you can initially do a, a first aid by putting a splint on the deformed side or injured side. You elevate the hand, and if you have available, I'll add to this if you have available ice compress, that would be good. And then call or seek a medical consult in school or your uh, school doctor or school nurse. Next, we go on the forearm. This is also caused by landing on an outstretched upper extremities. So we can see on the mid forearm some signs and symptoms of swelling, tenderness as well, deformity. As we said before, you can always tell that there's a more serious injury if the fracture is an open type fracture when you see exposed bone when you see active bleeding. So still, what to do in these cases for both open and closed injuries, you splint 
elevate if you have an ice with an ice compress then seek medical consult your school doctor school nurse so what are the, uh, their fractures with the elbow it's very common for patients at five to seven years old it is a deformity on the elbow commonly also on fall not stretch hand as we see in the screen you can see, you can appreciate a motorbike accident causing a discontinuity or a broken bone on the elbow area shown with the red arrow and also on the top corner elbow fractures will be the same condition swelling tenderness limitation of elbow motion and deformity of the elbow always when you have a suspicious fracture you should do the same protocol or the same procedure always plan you elevate you can put an ice as we said for an elbow fracture you may add some by putting some splint or arm sling for this matter so what are your options for for arm sling uh, for your splinting would be a hard cardboard or any hard object that can be placed long enough for the fracture to be covered by the splint and then to hold it up you can put some elastic bandage or any uh, loose towel or handkerchief or anything that could hold it on its proper place and then oh, don't forget to seek medical consult other fracture would be the collarbone fracture the collarbone fracture this is a fall a direct fall on the shoulder on the lateral side causing your compression of your collarbone the signs and symptoms will be as follows swelling of the shoulder tenderness limitation of motion and gross deformity can sometimes palpate a prominent collarbone when you when you are suspecting a fracture of the collarbone what to do for clavicular or collarbone fractures the first thing to do here is apply an um, arm sling and seek a medical consult as well femoral shaft fractures these are thigh fractures from the x-rays shown on the right side you can see you can appreciate the right the discontinuity of the bone on this is the broken bone is on the left you are looking at the patient face to face so this is the left thigh of the patient so you can see a transverse fracture of the mid thigh this commonly happens with a high injury fracture in, in high in energy injuries so it can be a motorcycle a car accident a bad fall but for children younger than walking age if you see some femoral shaft fracture you always suspect a child abuse which is accounts for 80 percent of patients less than one year old what are the signs and symptoms they are swelling the thigh tenderness limitation motion of lower extremity and deformity of the thigh so what to do how to to split it you can see on this picture and this picture a long splint placed on the medial and lateral aspect of the leg you splint it you keep the patient lying down and also put some ice compress and you can seek also medical consult so for fractures and dislocation so when you mean dislocation it is affecting the congruity of a joint so meaning the joint is not in its proper place one part of the bone is displaced from the joint space to a zone in the red arrow so the common would be an elbow or a shoulder dislocation when you mean dislocation this is usually uncommon in children because in children the the bone is more more uh, tendency to break prior to dislocating because it, was, it is more um, um, stiff with the ligament at this time and age so normally they get more of fracture before in dislocation so it happens for sports injuries or fall on a stretch hand as shown in this picture and then these pictures so elbow dislocation would be seen as swelling of the elbow 
and see some tenderness, limitation of motion, and also deformity. What to do? You can put a splint on the most comfortable position of the patient. You elevate the upper extremity, apply ice, and also seek medical consult. For shoulder dislocation, this is common in adolescents and contact sports, falls, motorcycle accidents, and fights. So we can see from this x-ray picture is a dislocated shoulder joint as shown by a red arrow. The red arrow points to the joint. The head is placed downward. The humeral head or the shoulder bone is placed below the joint. It's not in congruity with the joint. So it's dislocated. The signs and symptoms would be uh, swelling the shoulder, a tenderness, and limitation of the motion. You can appreciate a hollow shoulder joint when you palpate it because you can see that the bone is inferiorly, anteriorly displaced. So what to do? You can put the patient on its most comfortable position. You put an ice, seek medical consult. Sports injuries in children. This is caused by continuous or repetitive stress. It is common in adolescents. Something we call it stress fractures can happen because of repetitive stress. So stress fracture are very common for sports injuries. The most common type of sports associated with injuries are very familiar with the Philippine sports would be basketball followed by badminton, volleyball, then badminton. So, there are different uh, types of sports-related injuries according to time. There is an acute and chronic. When you mean acute, it happens uh, on the same time. It can be an ankle sprain, a forearm fractures, a finger joint dislocation. When you have chronic injuries in sports, you can have recurrent back pains, recurrent knee pains, you can have recurrent elbow pains. So now we go to the infections. When you mean infection, there is an invasion of a bacteria or an organism inside the joint or inside the bone. When you mean arthritis, arthro means joint, itis means inflammation, osteo means bone, myelitis is meaning um, inflammation within the bone marrow. So the septic arthritis is joint infection but os and osteomyelitis is a bone infection. You should differentiate the two entities. Septic arthritis is an inflammational joint. It can be a pus forming organism that is present in the joint. It's very common for newborn and infants and children at the age two to three years old. For the reason behind that the joint of this uh, age group are very vascular and then the organism can easily easily go past on the um, meta epiphyseal joint plates. The septic arthritis can involve the hip joint, the knee joint, and then the elbow joint. And when you mean septic arthritis, we can appreciate from the red arrow the, the joint on the right, which I, on this x-ray picture, it's within the joint, but you can see a widening of the joint space on the left hip, while on the right of the screen of the picture, which is the shoulder, and also a widened and sometimes absent bone on the shoulder, which can be caused by infection as well and hip joint infection and shoulder infection respectively. So what are the ways that the bacteria can go to your joint? It can be an existing bloodstream infection, uh, can be a direct extension from the surrounding soft tissue infection. For example, the joint, there are muscular in infection around the joint. When you mean direct injection, there's a direct inoculation of bacteria inside the joint. For example, a punctured wound directly into the joint. That is a direct injection. Direct extension is surrounding area, causing it to involve the nearby joint. And the bloodstream is an existing mm -hmm. 
blood infection that goes into your joint. The signs and symptoms for septic arthritis are acute pain, acute onset. There's a pain, there's a limitation of motion. The patient at a young age becomes apprehensive, irritable, feverish, and has a loss of appetite. The affected joint is warm and very swollen. Septic arthritis definitely it is a orthopedic surgical emergency that needs an antibiotic, a surgical drainage, and the brigma. Afterwards, you can be split and put on a pain, pain reliever to prevent and also prevent deformity. The goal for this uh, condition is to restore function and the congruency of the joint. Now we go with the osteomyelitis. Osteo means bone. Myelitis, bone marrow infection. So infection of the bone is common in infants and children. The metaphysis of the long bone is the common effect. When you mean metaphysis, it's the the um, cancellus or the soft bone near nearing the end of the long bone. So that's where very that is also the area which is very vascular, meaning it's very high in blood vessels. That's why the infection or the bacteria or the the invading organism can easily easily infect that area of the bone. So the route of infection as we said previously can we still have bloodstream, direct extension and an open fracture. As we said open fracture is a type of fracture in which the broken bone went out into the skin, exposed itself and goes back into the into inside causing the the fracture the organism to be brought inside. It is an open fracture. Sometimes you can grossly see the uh, bone outside the skin that's already definitely an open fracture. So the signs and symptoms are pain, high fever, chills, vomiting, and dehydration, and also tenderness the over the bone. For a area like the legs, the thigh, the patient this there's an inability to to walk to walk and that, that's the that's the common symptoms for this osteomyelitis what you will see here is a changes in the bony structure of the bone for example in this in this x-ray film you can see the uh, the x-rays we are seeing the patient we are facing the patient so the normal side would be the right side this is the left side of left side of the patient the one with the involved osteomyelitis or bony infection would be in the right side with the red arrow you can appreciate here a not normal looking bone comparing it with the left thigh bone you can see some changes in the cortex or the covering of the bone there are also excess um, um, bony formation surrounding the existing bone. So that already is a sign of infection. So what are treatment of osteomyelitis? Still an antibiotics. A surgical um, decompression also can be done and splinter casting. Same as the osteoseptic arthritis, the goal is to restore function Restore function and um, good functionality as well. So last but not the least, the topic is about their child syndrome. About their child syndrome is from this, this study is in 1998 to 2004. The cases rises from 1998, that's 2000, which rises up, rose up to 11,000 to around 9,000 from 1990 to 2004. Alarming, so it means there are higher percentages now of of um, battered uh, child abuse. It may be old, but this could be reflective of of the existing child abuse incidents in the country. So it's it's roughly around nine thousand to eleven thousand two hundred of child abuse incidents every year. So the common um, type of child abuse is physical, 
for both and uh, for child abuse, it's a physical abuse. Then the age of PA. PA is, is physical abuse of patients. Is normally it happens at a young age, at zero to three. There's a declining incidence, four to six, seven to nine, ten to twelve, with a sudden rise at the age thirteen to fifteen. So there's a two, the peak one, and then the second peak would be at thirteen to fifteen years old, and gradually goes down after seventeen, eighteen. The common perpetrators for physical abuse, as reported by the CPU, CPU is Child Protection Unit of uh, of the Philipp I think this is gathered from the Philippine General Hospital. Hospital is the father, so it, it's 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 reported here that the father is the common perpetrator, and the common child abuse history of patient is when you discuss it to the family you can you can unex, you can you can explain you cannot explain the injury there's an absent or changing or evolving history when asked to the parents there is a delay in seeking care so it could be done earlier but why the why why it's now it's delayed and why it's reported just now so that's the few questions that you should be we should be asking the caregiver has an inappropriate affect and sometimes there's a triggering event, the loss of control of the caregiver causes for, for child abuse. There are also unrealistic expectations of the caregiver. That's why it tends to, to, to make the, uh, uh, there an injury to the child. There is existing family or caregiver crisis or stress which is being projected to the, to the child. There is a physical or social isolation from the family. There is increasing severity or number of consults. You can see, uh, you see this, the patient has a several consults with the same condition, but it's not yet reported. And lastly would be abuse during childhood of the caregiver. So it ha the caregiver has a previous history of, of child abuse, sometimes it being again projected to the, to the child. For physical examination, you check the head, neck, skin, chest, abdomen, genitalia, and skeletal trauma. So what to see in the head and neck would be a swelling, abrasions, laceration, bruises, uneven skull for fracture, bulging skull from, from bleeding, bleeding in the mouth, tooth decay, bleeding in the eyes, or deformed ears. For the skin, you also check for bruises, bites, and burns. Pinch and ligature marks, object pattern, for example, or belt that's been hit the patient. You can see an object pattern march on the skin. Stocking love immersion patterns, which is the hot and cold, hot um, water injury. You can see on this picture on the lower side. The, pa the patient was hand was placed on a hot water or the foot. For the chest, abdomen, genital, you check for bruises, unequal breathing, pain deformities, abrasions, laceration, and private parts. These are the specificity of fractures for physical abuse. They, they classify it high, moderate, and common but low specificity. These are highlighted for the high specificity. We talk about metaphyseal chip fractures of the bone, bucket handle fractures of the bone, rib fractures, especially in posterior location, scapular uh, fractures of the back, spinous process of the spine, and the sternum of the, or the chest um, fracture. The moderate specificity, specificity is as, as follows, multiple bilateral fractures, fractures of different ages, S meaning you, you see, when you see the patient, there are different fractured bone, but the, the, the time of healing is different. So it means that the patient has, has been constantly uh, had an episode or history of child abuse. That's why the bone heals at different times. FFSL separation, the bone is not, the bone, the growth plate is injured. Vertebral body fractures, digital fracture meaning your fingers and your toes, complex or multiple skull or head fractures. The common but low specificity for child abuse are as follows subperiosteal newborn formation, which is meaning a callus, a clavicle fracture, a collarbone, long bone shaft fracture like your 
thigh and leg, we know is called a fracture. So from this x-rays on the right, you can see a spiral fracture on the lower side of the thigh bone. And also on the upper side, there's a chest x-ray showing multiple rib fracture at different age or different uh, time or ages of fracture healing of the rib. So maybe in this case, the patient has se se several times got injured on the rib cage. So what to do if you suspect physical abuse to children? Uh, there are offices who are involved in this, the Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD. The hospital can also have uh, a unit, we call, it, we call it a Child Protection Unit or CPU. It, may be, it can be present in all hospitals, especially in government hospital. And a Woman and Child Desk Unit. For, and also can be seen on PNP and NBI. And also in the hospital also has a child of a woman protection unit as well. So thank you for this short presentation. We would like to thank the Philippine College of Physicians and also these efforts from the doc, from the Department of Orthopedics, uh, College of Medicine and Philippine General Hospital, University of Philippines Manila for preparing with this with Dr. Wang and Dr. Panera. So end this lecture and have a good day.